We're working on a 4050 today, and this customer's wanting us to slide out the back tires because he's getting ready to put a loader on it. They were set on about 30 inch centers, and he had a set of duels on them, and he wanted to take the duels off because the, the holes were getting watered out on the, the wheel itself, and he didn't really need the duels anymore. So went ahead and he took the hubs off of it, and then he wanted us to try to get the tires slid out for him. So I've already got this one slid out. We're sliding them out to 40s. You can see the gap between the, the cab there and the tire compared to that one there. That one's 30, 31 inches roughly, so we're moving them out about 9 inches roughly. I just want to show you guys how uh, these move out. Um, so if you're wanting to do them yourself, it's really not too bad as long as the wedges will break free. On these, you've got the little bolt right here. There's a little gear in there and it spins. You can see there is um, a set of teeth on the one side of the axle there. There's a slot on this side where the wedge on the inside slides uh, for the keyway right there. And so then you got three bolts here uh, that holds the wedge, pulls the wedge towards this way. You got two pusher bolts here. And then on the back side, there's three bolts there that push the wedge uh, towards the outside there. On some of the little bit newer ones, uh, you'll have six bolts all the way around and then usually two or four pusher bolts. So you'll break free the, the three bolts here, the three bolts on the outside or the inside, and then you'll push your pusher bolts to release the, push the wedge back in. And I always like to put the gear on top and then you can uh, turn that with a ratchet or a breaker bar and just slowly roll it out or in depending on which way you're wanting to move the axles or move the, the tire out on the axle. And then once you get it in the position that you want it, you'll start tightening the bolts, uh, kind of alter alternating them. On um, this one, you'll do like one or two in here and then go on the inside and do the same thing until you get it good and flush. Uh, you can see the wedges right here. Uh, you want them even. That way the tire does not wobble while you're driving it and uh, pretty simple i'll go ahead and i'm going to show you the process on this one right here so this side slid in pretty far both sides were and the bolts on the inside here you can't get a socket or an impact on it and so you have to use a wrench on it but they're so tight but you really can't uh with a normal wrench you can't get enough leverage on it and so i've actually got a kind of a homemade deal here I've got a wrench that i cut off and it's got enough i've had to bend it to get enough angle to get in there and then i can usually get them break free i gotta sometimes use a pry bar to pry up against the wrench so the wrench doesn't slip off of it uh, but i was able to do that side that away so i'm gonna go ahead and loosen those and then i'm gonna just loosen them just a little bit and then i'm gonna rotate the tire uh, to get the gear up on top here and then we'll pull the tire out
this one's definitely being a lot stubborn than the other one. The other one, I uh, pushed the pusher bolts in, it broke the wedge free right away. Never had to hit on the end of the axle. Some of the old timers taught me, you hit on the end of the axle, it'll uh, vibrate enough to kind of break that thing loose, I guess. Uh, I've had good luck doing that over the years. So now we're trying to get the slide out and uh, the shaft in there with a the little gear on it, they'll get kind of froze up. That's the case on this one here. It's kind of froze up. It's not one to turn just the best. We're starting to get it. Now we're rotating pretty good. Like I said, normally the hardest part is getting the wedges broke free. Especially if they haven't been moved in 20, 40 years, like this one probably hadn't. So now we need to we'll measure from the center of the tire out to the center of the drawbar to get our distance of where we want to set this at. Uh, you can, after you set one side, you can just measure the, the axle here on the opposite side. pusher bolts back out. I'll make sure and pull them all the way out until they hit the stop. That way you're not pushing the wedge against it. Have to clean that up. Customer had taken those loose. Looks like they hit it with a hammer and booted it up a little bit. <laughs> Want to make sure and get the top wedge on the inside pulled in as well. Sure, make sure that top and bottom wedge are both evenly pulled out. Once you get everything good and tight, then you want to run your pusher bolts back in. That's it. We've got both sides slid out now, and uh, customer liked that a lot more because you can tell he was going through some mud and it was already scraping up on the side of the cab. Pretty good. And uh, he's planning on putting a loader on it, so I think he's going to use it to feed some cows. So he'll like this a lot more, uh, better stance, uh, less risk of rolling 
the tractor over if you're on an incline as well. We're going to keep the inside or the front ones a little bit closer to the middle there, uh, just to keep from wearing the front out, front end out so quick. Uh, a lot of weight when you're carrying big hay bales on that front end right there, and so he wants to keep it in a little ways, like it is. Uh, but these are adjustable. Uh, there's four bolts there, and uh, the piece here just bolts onto that piece. And you slide it out, and there's two bolts here, and you can slide the tie rod out a little bit further if you need to. And that'll space out that front end if you want it to. So we spaced these out to 40 inches, where they were on about 30, 31 inches.